Hi. May I come in? Yes, you may. Pleased to meet you. Joe. My name is Joe too. Joe, meet Joe. Pleased to meet you. Stacy. Stacy. I was really excited because Joe was my last hope. And who have we got here? Chelsea. Hi Chelsea, pleased to meet you. How old are you? Seven. Eight. Eight. I think Joe is cool. And what's your name? Sarah. Hi Sarah, pleased to meet you. And who's this? Zachary. Hi Zachary, please shake my hand. I'm pleased to meet you. Oh, and there's another Zachary. You're not Zachary though, are you? What's your name? Ben. And who's this? Andy. Hi Andy, pleased to meet you. I'm Joe. Hi. It was very hard to believe that Joe was actually in my house. And who's this little one here? This is Jacob. Hi, Jacob. Are you going to say hi to Jojo? No. OK. So can I place this somewhere? Yep, as long as it's up high enough where they can't get to it. I tell everybody when they come in the house, when they set their purses down, to put it three feet and above. And actually, I think I'm switching it to five. When I first arrived, Stacy and Joe asked the children to go outside and play in the backyard. You see, it's like they're on a beach. They're making sandcastles. Yeah, they want to go to the beach so bad. Do you go to the beach or get away? No, I'd be scared to death with a huge beach and my kids running. It'd have to be a gated beach. I don't know if they have them. <laughs> We're big about gates and locks and stuff like that. <laughs> So it's the fear of, of not being able to control the kids. Joe gets embarrassed, but they have those harnesses that are like vests with leashes. It's hard to just go on a walk with them in the neighborhood. Or to, I can't even take them to the park. It's something that I want to be able to do. It's just too stressful, and I couldn't handle it myself. No, 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 no! Stacy went out into the cul-de-sac with all six kids, and she was really trying her best to keep tabs on them all. Hey! Don't, no, don't go over those boards. Jacob, see the guy? He says slow. Thank you. Mum's definitely stressed out with trying to manage all the children at once. As soon as something happens and one child goes in one direction. You guys, don't go in the neighbor's driveway unless you ask. She shows this great anxiety. I'm missing one, okay. Don't like my clothesline. I hang stuff on it. That's very dangerous. Get over here now. You don't do what Zachy does. That was naughty. Jacob, who are you? OK. Playtime was no fun for Mum at all, with all six kids running off in different directions. And Joe nowhere to be found. Where'd Daddy go, you guys? Joe? Well, can you tell me before you just leave? I thought you had Jacob. Here, Joe. Okay, well, I'm going to a meeting. <laughs> and we're not having a <laughs> Stacy feels like she is left here with the kids and, you know, I'm out doing whatever, which is actually work. I'm not able to spend as much time with the kids. I'm trying to get us to a place where I can. Oh, well, nobody knows. I think the idea of being out alone with all six kids really got Mum flustered, so she brought them all in for a nap. You like ice water? You! I think that mum puts the kids down for a nap, not because they're tired. Stay here, please. Stay here, please. But because mum needs a break. Get up here right now. Nope. You don't hide from me. Jacob, get to your bed. Just one frazzled mum trying to do the best she can, really. My head's going to explode, literally. Like, 90% of the time. Physically, my head is like, I want to tear it off and throw it at somebody. She's emotionally and physically exhausted. So the overwhelming feeling of having to raise six children <laughs> is a bit too much for Stacy to say the least. <laughs> Once the younger ones had gone down for a nap, I pulled Stacy aside to have a chat with her. What's the toughest time of the day for yourself? It depends if Joe's here or not. Summertime, a lot of times he's not here. Yeah. And that's when I get like all flustered and I'm trying to cook and they're all around. And when you say he's not around, what does he do? He, he works like 60 hours a week. He's driving a truck right now, going to school full time. And 
So he's pretty much non-existent. Like I say, he sleeps here like four hours a night. So you raise these kids? Alone. That's Most of the time, pretty much alone? Yeah. And I can't do six by myself. Stacy and Joe have very different agendas right now. Joe wants to be able to change careers and better the family situation. And it's a long term goal. But mum needs help now. You can only handle so much, and I got to a breaking point, and now I'm overwhelmed, exhausted, and can't do it anymore. I wanted to talk to Andrew and Sarah. Get a chance to speak to you both. Because their dad is not around much. They haven't seen their biological mother for over a year now, and that's hard for any child to take. This is new for you, right? Because you guys are obviously brother and sister, but then daddy met Stacy. Yep. So like, now you have a bigger family, right? Yep. So where's your mummy? In California. California. In she California. hasn't talked to us since when last year. She was year. turning eight, I think. We haven't talked to her since my eighth birthday and Sarah's ninth. Are there things that you would like to say to her? Like, to your mum? I want to go oh. visit you. How have you been and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I miss you a lot. I hope she'll remember us and, like, see us again. But what's important is to make sure that you both know there are lots of people in this house that love you very much. I mean, that just must be such a heavy load for these children to carry. Well, I would love Andrew and Sarah to recognise is that it's not their fault. Jimmy, let me give you a big hug. Mm. Joe and Stacy have had some real serious challenges to deal with, and I'm prepared to do what is necessary to make a difference. But I need to know from them first whether they're prepared to make some big changes. Stacy and Joe, the blessing that you have in your life of having six children should be recognised, but it's not. Because emotionally, you're overwhelmed. Joe, you're away from home a lot. And mum, you're home here with the children. And that can take its toll in itself, can't it? It was so much easier when he was here. He always helped at bedtime. And we read with the kids together. And we sang songs with them. And I mean, that seems like a dream now. Children do need your attention. They do need your quality time. Joe, Andrew and Sarah would love to be able to spend more time with you. They want to be a part of this family. Mm -hmm. yes. And under the circumstances with Sarah and Andrew's other parent, more than ever, they need that. In this house, everything's become overwhelming. What are you guys doing to change the situation right now? Because what I see is nothing. Mum, let's talk about how you are around the children. Jacob! Come here! This is you, walking around with your face all day like this. You've made it very clear that you guys can't even go on an outing or a vacation or enjoy yourselves because of the fear of not knowing how to handle the children when you're out. We tried it. We tried just to go to a little park here and I don't know. It's just, it's just stressful. Wouldn't it be nice to all go out as a family again? Well, the kids would like to go anywhere, like on a vacation. You guys need to make a decision whether you are going to change where you're at right now. Because not only are you doing it for yourselves, but you're doing it for your kids. I felt like we need to get busy and make some changes because the kids, I mean, they're gonna, you know, we're gonna lose them emotionally. I don't wanna become further disconnected with my kids. The pair of you are gonna have to do it together to be able to raise your children and be a happier family than what you are right now. Taking what Joe has told me to heart, definitely, because I've been waiting for a change for a long time. Okay, so enough said and done. 
Tomorrow's a new leaf. I've got some big plans for the Faker family. But before I reveal them, there's some situations I need to address that just can't wait. I wanted Joe to go on a picnic with Sarah and Andrew so that he could get the chance to answer some of the children's questions with regards to their biological mother. Okay, so tell me more about what you were trying to tell me the other day. It feels kind of sad because we haven't seen our mom in a long time. And I feel and depressed because she never calls us and I feel like she doesn't like love us anymore. And you guys feel like it's your fault that she hasn't called? Yeah. The children were very receptive to discussion with their father, which was fantastic. People sometimes make decisions. We don't understand why they make them. You guys feel like you can't talk about her? Sometimes. It's a hard thing to talk about. I still picture what she looks like in my head all the time. It's not your fault. I hope that that picnic was a turning point for Sarah and Andrew, that maybe they can start to move on a little bit, not to forget about their mom, and, and like I said, hopefully she'll call, but if she doesn't, at least that they can deal with it. So, Dad, I think we should have more days like this. What do you think, Sarah and Andrew? More yeah. time with Dad like this to come and hang out together? Yeah, yeah. like one-on-one -on -one time. The picnic with my dad helped because me and Sarah have been having a hard time handling our problems about our mom. It was good to hear it wasn't our fault that she hasn't called us. Stacy and Joe are absolutely petrified at the prospect of taking all six kids out in public. Hey guys, stay together. So I'm bringing everyone to the park because with a little bit of confidence and the right tools, they'll have nothing to fear. What's important here is that you guys always keep yourself at a distance where mummy and daddy can see you. If you can't see mummy and daddy, you've gone too far. <laughs> Go. It wasn't long before Zachary ran off and broke the rules. Come here, Zach. This was a good opportunity for Dad to step up. So you're going to place him on the bench, OK? You're going to explain to him why you put him here, OK? And then you're going to leave him here for four minutes. Zachary, look at me. I can hear you. You're sitting on the naughty bench because you ran off, right? And you were told to stay where Mummy and Daddy could see you, not to run away. So you'll have to stay there now, because you did not listen. Now that Stacy and Joe have seen how easy it is to discipline the children out in public, I hope they now know they can go anywhere. Mum and Dad are petrified to take their six kids anywhere. Oh, but I've got a surprise for them, because we're going to attack that fear head on. Jojo would like to say something very important. You guys are all going to go away for six days together as a family to Florida. And I'd like to present this to you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, of course. Florida. I never thought it really knew that Joe would take us on a vacation. Honestly, I never would have thought that this was even a, a possibility. I wouldn't perceive taking six kids, especially some that are as young as they are, on a vacation like this. We're going to need these! What they learn on vacation, they can take home, and what they learn at home, they can take on vacation. Who's going to make sandcastles? <laughs> You're going on an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of in shock because I'm going on an airplane in one day with my six children and my husband for the first time ever. We really haven't got any time to waste. No, because we sure we're don't. going very soon. <laughs> yeah, I was just like excited, but like, holy crap, like how am I gonna be able to, you know, pull this off? We're doing the countdown technique. We're writing everything down so we can eliminate it before we leave, right down to the last thing. Everybody has to pre-plan before they go on holiday, make sure there's a checklist. So the countdown technique is all about that. Shorts, underwear, books. I found 
goggles. Yeah. Socks. Socks. How many socks? Well, I don't know how many. I have eight kids. No, I have six kids. See? The little suitcases we've got here, it's because they're going to pack their toys and activities to occupy themselves on the plane oh. with. He's trying to pack the food. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, you're going to eat there. You need to pack some toys to play with on the beach. Oh, dear, this is like packing one of my bags. <laughs> this vacation is going to be um, the opportunity of a lifetime. I'm anxious to see how Joe's going to help us do this. Call in flights for Florida. Flights for Florida. They were going on an aeroplane. So I wanted to go over a few rules with the children to make sure that they know how they are expected to behave. Benjamin, listen to what Jojo's saying. When you're on the aeroplane, it's very important, OK, that you listen to Mummy and Daddy, that you look into your little bags and keep yourself active by doing your word searches or playing with your toys, but no shouting or screaming, no kicking your feet and having temper tantrums because there are other people that will be on the aeroplane. I'm a little worried because it's a lot to deal with and maybe the twins and Jacob will be naughty on the plane. But I don't really know. The main point here is to make sure that you keep the kids occupied. I think it taught them a little something because they, some of them have never been on a plane before. Florida, here I go. Okay, okay so we're buddy system. We're going to head yeah, this way, we all buddied up. When we arrived at the airport, I had the older children pair up with the younger children so that everybody was accounted for and nobody would go wandering off. You look at this. You're doing the buddy up system fantastic. I kind of like the buddy system so no one gets lost in anything because Ben and Jack usually like run away and stuff. It's very cool. The Fager family got to the airport with no incident and for the first time this family went on an aeroplane. Listen, listen to me, all of you. Benjamin and Zachary, we're going to take off in a minute. But I'll break. Remember, stay in your seatbelt, okay? The golden rule for taking children on an aeroplane is to be prepared, organised and to bring lots of activities. General tips for you when you're on the plane. Make sure that they get out their activities and they're playing with those so they're keeping the kids occupied. Now if they do something that is banging or kicking the other person in front, then just use your tone of voice. All right? Just a minute, honey. No. Don't kick that chair, somebody else is sitting there. If it comes out of control where they're really, really shouting, get up from your seat, lean into the children, say, too loud. Have fun, but too loud. The Fagers were prepared and organised, and that flight went smoother than they could ever have imagined. Booked the whole family a vacation at the Marco Island Marriott Resort and Spa. Gather them together first. Tell the children what you expect from them. Listen, we're not going to run off, right? Stay together. Stay together. We're going to follow the person in Walk front of us. Come on, let's go. The children had never been to a hotel before, so I reminded them always to buddy up so that they could be a nice shot of their parents. This is a very large resort. You need to stay close together so that you don't get lost, okay? Okay, guys, back, back in line. In line. Right, yeah. Buddy up. When I first saw that room, I'm like, wow. Okay. Start unpacking your clothes. Keep the toys in there and then they can dip into the toy bag whenever they want. Get the kids sorted, get their clothes laid out, everything done and then you can start to order dinner. Remember that even though we're on holiday, there's still the cornerstones of a routine that need to be met when you're on vacation. Ben, would you put all your clothes away? Good boy. Stacy and Joe are going to have to work really hard together in making sure that all six of their children toe the line. First morning we got here, we went down to the beach. I was nervous. So remember, this is a time for children to have fun, 
for you to relax and have fun with them. I wanted to show mum and dad the easiest way to stop the kids from running off was to keep them occupied and engaged in an activity. Go had me sit down in the lawn chair and just let my kids play and just watch them and observe them and relax. Just get water. Dad did a fantastic job in keeping the kids all engaged and it gave mum a break too. But mum's break didn't last long. Hmm, Benjamin ran towards the water and mum had to go and get him. Benjamin, warning, Benjamin. <laughs> I gave you a warning and you did not listen. Oh, oh, oh. Um, we don't we don't throw sand at other people. When you put him onto his naughty spot, you're gonna explain with your glasses off so you can give him eye contact. Okay, why he's there. Alright. Discipline needs to be consistent, whether you do it on the beach or at home. Benjamin, you're in the naughty spot for going to get water without asking. I gave you a warning and you did not stop. Now you will sit here. Now let's move away. Benjamin knew that mum had business and he stayed there for four minutes. So what do you need to say to mommy? Okay. Stacy did a fantastic job with the naughty spot and if she continues with it, things will get easier. This afternoon, I had an activity for them, and it's all about bonding, teamwork, and bringing them together as a family. We have to use all these pieces as a family to make the boat. Think we can do that? Yeah! yeah. I bet you can. When I first heard we were going to build a boat together, I thought it was kind of cool. I thought that was going to be fun. But I didn't realize we'd have to make it ourselves. I thought there would be plans there. OK, work together, Mom. Boat building was very fun because our family never, never has built anything together before. Well. It could hold the flag in. Yeah. The kids have really good ideas, and that's something that Joe's really showing us, is that we need to involve the kids and, and listen to their ideas and, and um, have them help us. Yeah, you can write it anywhere, my love. Look, see where Ben is? We're going to help Ben. Come here, put it on first. Ben and Zach were very naughty. <laughs> ben just hit Zach as hard as he could with the oar. After Ben hit Zachary, Dad pulled the boys aside. Now, Benjamin and Zachary, I want you to give each other a hug and tell each other you're sorry. Yeah, but how does that resolve it? What have they learned from that? This is the point. And they're... OK, Benjamin and Zach, come here, please. There'll be no hitting one another, OK? Because that's unacceptable behaviour. It's naughty behaviour. You said it was an accident. If it was an accident, you need to say you're sorry, Ben. So look at Zachary. I learned something. If it's an accident, go ahead and apologise. Just make clear that it's not acceptable to hit each other. Once we sorted out our incident, it was back to boat building. Are you happy with that? Yep. I'm proud of Sarah for naming the boat. Andrew really, you know, did his part in getting it together. Even like the twins picking their own ideas and Chelsea with the waves, that was awesome. Who built this boat? The Vegas family. And you did a very good job in working together. What was great for me is for this family to feel very proud of the boat they had built. And together as a family, they had fun with it. I needed to let them have their family quality time alone. And so I took it as a perfect opportunity to say goodbye to them so that I can go away and let these guys get on with the advice and the technique and see how they do. Listen, guys, I'm going to go. I'm going to leave you guys, OK, to get up with having fun. I'll see you when I get back. Don't forget the techniques. Have fun. Bye. Enjoy the afternoon in our Balinese spa. Are you naked? I'm glad to see you took time to get a sitter and spend time by yourselves. You're naked. <laughs> it's about time you had some fun together. Yeah. <laughs>
this. It's just so great to see you guys enjoying the day. I don't know which fork to use. I don't either. I just dig in. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have your swimsuit on? Well, get it on or throw it in that bag. Good. A family trip to the beach. Look for Ben and Zach's shoes under all the beds right now. We only have one. We need three. This is mine. There's a phone under there. Disorganization equals stress. It's that simple. Put those away. The buckets are not what we're looking for. We're looking for your shoes. Look under the couch. Here's one. See? They're in the towels, you guys. Now exiting. That's crazy. It took an hour just to get out the door. Are you going to go on the scavenger hunt today? Yeah. A scavenger hunt. The kids are going to love this. How old are you? 27. Count them. One. Two. Joe, I'm loving that enthusiasm. Eight. OK. What are you doing, yeah. Sarah? Why are you not part of it? So I can't get to do anything. It takes forever because there's 50 million of us. I don't know. Every time I've done a scavenger hunt, it's really fast. I know, jumping but in you've cars never done it as a family with little kids. I did it as a we got Jacob who's about to fall asleep, and two four-year-olds are rolling on the floor. Well, that's really because we're not doing anything. Stacy, are you hunting for your positive attitude? Honey, they've been acting like this since we started. If you guys want to carry on making big progress with your family, you've got to be 100% motivated. We've got more work to do. Okay, should we take a look? Sure. Yep. We can enjoy the afternoon in our Balinese spa. <laughs> <laughs> he will never do that. This is like a honeymoon we never had. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. And look, your humor's back, your peri, you're just laughing away. You were able to spend some good quality time together as a couple and just forget about the kids. I didn't even make a phone call or anything. Letting go is such an important part of being able to relax and make sure that you do that at home as well. I'm glad you had such a fantastic time. Look for Ben and Zach's shoes under all the beds right now. We got one more shoe to find, okay? Here's one, see? <laughs> They're in the towels. What was going on there? Good job you didn't have a plane to catch. You'd have missed it. What you're not going to do is get yourself out the door if you're not organised. So you have to be ahead of the game so that you're able to be able to smoothly get out of the door. And that's what I didn't see happen here. It takes forever because there's 50 million of us. I don't know. It took us an hour to get started. Oh my word, sour puss face you are there. <laughs> and then you're wondering why the kids are sitting on the chairs going, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Energy level's completely flat. Got to be excited. I was, ex I was very excited. Well, if that's excitement, I'd hate to see you happy. So, Mum, you've got to recognise that a holiday is about everybody doing something that they love to do. It doesn't all evolve around you. There is stuff that needs to be tweaked today because you need to be able to take this back home as well now. But I'm very proud of the pair of you in how far you've come along. I mean, absolutely remarkable. It really is. Even though the meeting was a lot more positive than I actually expected, there were some some serious things that she brought out. So are we ready to be able to tweak the rest of these? You guys ready? All right then, so let's carry on and get some work done. Hi! Oh God, swimming again. You went swimming again. After watching the DVD footage, the first thing I needed to help this family with was sorting out the chaos in getting them out the house. So I'm giving them the out the door technique so they can use it here and at home. The first step that we're going to do is to have organisation, which is let's have all the shoes in one place, all the beachwear in one place, okay? We need to prepare ahead of time. And that, that's, that's the bottom line. It, the stuff needs to be set up and we want the kids to be able to do that. All the beach toys right here with the big purple bag. Good. Sarah, come on down, be hard. Oh, well done, look at this. Good job, the shoes are great, guys. The okay. shoes are great. Come on, guys, come here. Okay, Stacey and Joe. So we've lined up their shoes, we've lined up the beach wear. The children know where to go when you're about to do the next stage. And this is the next stage. Once everything was in its place, it was time to get this family moving. And you guys have, starting from now, 10 minutes to do that. Let's go. Get your swimsuits on. 10 minutes with all their beach gear was going to be a challenge. But if they could do it here, then when they got home, it'd be a piece of cake. We're not ready yet. Dad, come on, chop, chop. Go put your shoes on, buddy. Here, put them on. 
Chop, Dad. The older children are doing their stuff. Jojo really helped us get the act together. A lot. You have two minutes. Room key. In the front. One minute. One minute. Give me the boogie board, please. We ready? You got Jacob, Joel. Yep. So, we are ready. Can I just tell you how long it took you all last time to leave this room? It took you 60 minutes. Shall I tell you how long it took you now? Because you were organised. It took 9 minutes and 21 seconds. Yay! Yay! Good Fantastic! Jo was telling the truth when she said it took 60 minutes to get out the door. It's not cool. I mean, we, we don't like seeing that. Right, come on, champions, let's go to the beach. OK. And it just goes to show you that when they're focused and they're organised and they prepare beforehand, they can quite easily get a family of eight out the door. Before I left, I wanted to speak to Joe about giving Sarah and Andrew a journal so they could write down their feelings about the situation with their biological mother. I thought that perhaps we could have you explain to the children what these books represent. Okay. I don't have any doubt that it's good for, for the kids to write their feelings down, to get them out, talk about them. So that should be a positive thing. These books, that one's yours. That one's yours. And the reason I'm giving you these is for you guys, anytime you start to have feelings about your mom, write them down. just write them down. Because we don't know what's going to happen, guys. But, you know, someday, you know, maybe if you're able to talk to her again, you can show her these books. Or you can keep them to yourself. I encourage you to share them with me. You can. And this is just a chance for you guys to write down your feelings. I liked writing in the journal because it made me feel excited to let my feelings go in a journal. <sighs> yeah. I don't really talk about my mom a lot in front of other people. I love you guys. That made me feel good. Well, when Sarah was reading from her journal, it she did add a little bit about the divorce and stuff that she's never talked about before, so... Um, and Joe said that was a, a huge step for her. That took a lot of courage. And you're a very brave little girl to write that down on that pad. And I'm really proud of you. Very proud of you. This vacation has given the Fager family a fresh, positive outlook on life and we'll definitely keep them smiling at those memories. It's been an absolute pleasure to be able to take you guys on holiday and give you the vacation that you've dreamed of. You've done very well, I'm really proud of you. I'd like to thank Joe for giving me the realization that I need to spend more time with my family. I guess I could just say thanks, Joe, for giving me my family back. We're gonna be cut up, can we give a cut to it? Thank you, Judo. Take care, darling. We had lots of fun. I'm going to miss Jojo so much. Keep drawing. I want her to stay for the rest of my life. I wanted to give you this. This is the flag and I want you to look after it. Take care, my love. I felt a little special when Jojo handed me the flag of the boat. Have a kiss. Mwah. Jojo. Stacey, keep positive, OK? There are no words to describe how grateful I am to Joe for picking us and helping us. May I hug you? I can leave the Fager family knowing that they have a positive outlook on life and that together as a family, they will just continue to thrive. Bye. Bye. I think our family is closer together. I think we're uh, more of a unit. <laughs> I really feel like a totally different person. I love you very much, Sarah. Love you too. Stacy's a lot less stressed out now because of the techniques that Joe's taught her. Go out there. There it goes. Warning. It's amazing how when I say warning that they're like, no, 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 I'm done. I'm sorry, Mom. Jacob. Went down. I like I've never spent this much time with my family before, ever. Go all the way! Woo! <laughs> Sarah and Andrew, for their mom, they're able to talk about that more openly. 
to Miss Moach. She helped us a lot. I wish she could stay here for the rest of my life. One of the biggest things that I've realized is how important each moment is. Just the sheer amount of time that I spend with my family. I've learned that when I come home from work, that if I can just take out just a little bit of time and just spend some quality time with my kids, that it'll benefit all of us. Not only did I feel like a vacation was impossible, I mean, I didn't leave the house. Now I can go anywhere with all six of them. Bo <laughs> has said, showed me how to embrace my children and like their lives and their laughter and just like everything that I've so missed out on. Mm -hmm.